Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off with some positive news for Intel's DG2, which naturally will be a range of products, both for discrete graphics cards, which you'll plunk into your PCIe slot, as well as for mobile. And honestly, Intel entering this space has been actually very much anticipated, I think, because yeah, sure, RDNA 2 is a pretty good architecture, to say the least, and Ampere is also really good as well, but let's face it, additional competition can only benefit us, especially in these particularly crazy times. Anyway, there has been a benchmark which has leaked, and this is on the GFX benchmark database. I'll link it in the video description, along with the discovery by Tim Apisak, so I'll link his Twitter as well. Now, unfortunately, we don't fully know what the configuration of this particular entry is, and also it is an engineering sample, so not only could there be things such as lower clock frequencies involved, but, well, yeah, drivers. But even so, it's looking to be quite positive, although the results are, well, interesting to say the least. I won't read out all of them because, quite frankly, I'll be here until Christmas, but certain results, such as, for example, Car Chase, which you can see compared here against a GTX 1660 Super, is pretty good, actually, for the Intel offering, especially if we look at the off-screen results. And also, yeah, it, things go downhill a little bit, though, when we look at Manhattan. And this seems to be the story overall, with some results being really good and some results being kind of lower. And, you know, Tim Apisak themselves, they compare it against a GTX 1650, but overall, these results are actually quite encouraging. Again, we are looking almost certainly at early drivers at the moment, the cards are not fully available. And yes, XE is technically available in other forms. After all, it's an iGPU as well. But there's almost certainly some architectural changes, I imagine, for the discrete variants. And also, again, we don't know what the clock frequency is. So for all we know, it could be, let's say, 500 megahertz or even a thousand megahertz lower than what the final product would be. And if we take this at face value and say that when things are going well for it, it's roughly on par with a GTX 1660 Super, perhaps a little bit lower or a little bit higher, that's actually quite positive when you compare that against other cards. For example, if we pop over to Tech Power Up and have a look at their results for the 1660 Ti, which is almost identical in terms of performance to the Supers, um, yeah, I mean, Doom Eternal here, 1440p, obviously this is not including ray tracing and other such effects. We're looking around 83 frames a second, and compare that against something along the lines of an RTX 3060 Ti, and it's probably around 170 that you can expect. Now, personally, I don't think this is one of the higher-end variants. I think it's more likely to be either 192 execution units or possibly 256, albeit running at lower clock frequencies. The higher variants go up to 512 execution units, and of course, there's also a considerable leap in mem memory bus width as well. At this point, we're fairly certain of the number of uh, execution units for the various models. Not only have we seen some evidence of them in drivers, and personally what I've been hearing as well, but Igor's lab did a really good write-up from his sources, and generally he's pretty accurate. So again, I'll leave a link to Igor's lab's uh, information as well in the video description. But yeah, from what I'm seeing here, it does seem like Intel could be actually quite competitive. Now, I just want to remind you guys that I was hearing that the primary focus at the beginning were mobile SKUs. So it is possible that these particular entries we're seeing are for mobile, and therefore we could be seeing lower clock frequencies anyway. However, I do believe that eventually it will, of course, come to desktop, although I don't know what differences there would be. You can assume, for example, we're going to see higher clock frequencies for desktop. And honestly, given these GPUs will almost certainly support things like hardware-based ray tracing, as Raja has, you know, pretty much revealed that it will, I'm actually really positive for these particular cards, even if they're only, let's say, 3060 Ti or 3070 compared to the desktop levels of performance, which is kind of where I'm thinking they're going to sit at this point. I actually think that's absolutely okay. 
Um, the mid-range has been... <laughs> it's been interesting, honestly. Uh, there's obviously been a ton of discussion with products like the 6600 XT, but given memory prices have been a little more expensive recently with the price per gigabyte going up considerably versus, let's say, 12 or 18 months ago, it'll be interesting to see what the pricing of these products would be. As I was hearing that Intel really wanted to make the cards as cheap as possible, because obviously at the end of the day they're carving out an entire new market. I mean, I was even hearing that an ideal price point for the higher end cards could be like 300 to 350 bucks. However, given memory prices are so high at the moment, it's quite difficult. Also, when it comes to pricing, you know, you can kind of have a target price in mind when you're producing a product, but obviously that can change significantly by the time that product comes to market because of things like manufacturing costs and shipping costs and everything else under the sun changing. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite positive of these products, but at this point, I kind of just want to actually get my hands on one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I just want to see it because I, I think another competitor is going to be really exciting. I think one of my favorite times in the market for PC gaming was when we saw, you know, 3D effects and NVIDIA and ATI before they were bought, obviously, um, all competing along with others such as Matrox. I, feel, I thought that it was absolutely phenomenal for innovation. And it's also going to be quite interesting too, because don't forget that uh, Intel Raja Kodori has essentially said that he's going to be supporting FSR. He thinks it's a great idea. So... <laughs> It's going to be very interesting to see how the market responds to that. And now a quickie for Narve 33. There's actually been a list of possible specifications which have leaked. And basically, one of the main differences between 31 and 33, well, 32 and 31 and 33 to be more accurate, um, is that they're also produced on a different manufacturing process. I've discussed this before in a couple of videos. Um, and basically, I was told that the um, basically the MCD is being produced on 6NM, but the GCD for Narve 31 and 2 are being produced on 5NM. Whereas Narve 33 does seem to be produced on 6NM, as I said, I've mentioned this in the video before. But rather interestingly, Bondrude, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, over at Beyond 3D Forums has also said it's similar. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, these are possible specifications, so this could be incorrect. We also have two shader engines, 20 work group processors, which means 51 20 FP32 units. And perhaps most interestingly of all, there's 128 megabytes of Infinity cache, and this is connected to 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 128 bit bus. And allegedly, the performance of this is going to be a little bit better, just a smidgen, than a 6900 XT or a 6800 XT, but the price is going to be more expensive. They're stating it's going to be around 450 US dollars. Now, I've actually been doing a little bit of digging on the pricing of Narve 31 and other SKUs. And again, what I just said about that whole Intel thing, it's very early at the moment to consider pricing because at the end of the day yeah i mean just anything can change in terms of production costs like for all we know there could be another component shortage or maybe there's an abundance of memory and vrm components and prices could go down or just you know you, you get what i'm saying guys like things can be absolutely just ridiculous memory prices have been really volatile recently um it was going up to like 15 bucks per gigabyte and i think it's around 12 at the moment something like that so that kind of gives you an idea when you're kind of outfitting a card with 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes, just how much of a difference that can make in unit costs. So I've been hearing it could be up to around 500, but these are super early internal targets. So honestly, I would not put much stock at the moment in pricing. Um, and yeah, by the way, Narve 31 onwards is going to be really expensive from what I'm hearing, like really expensive. Um, but the thing is, these cards are just so powerful, it's not really surprising. And given what NVIDIA, for example, have been charging for the RTX 3090, it's kind of like, yeah, it, it just is what the market is, unfortunately. But I think Narve 33 could be a very interesting product, um, especially if you're going to be playing at like 1440p or maybe kind of 60 hertz 4K. 
Um, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens with AMD's FSR technology to see if there's iterations of it because, you know, AMD themselves are really pushing that this is just FSR version 1, guys. And I'm hearing that FSR 2 is probably going to have like things like motion vectors, which obviously has been something NVIDIA are pushing with DLSS. But whether this is actually true or whether it's an exclusive feature for RDNA 3 or for all we know, it could be going bloody back to the days of Fury or something like that. We just don't know yet. So it'll be very interesting to see how that comes to play. But yeah, just a quickie then for Narvo33. Uh, apologies for not being on camera this video. I'm working on a couple of, well, really big videos. And honestly, things are just kind of everywhere at the moment as I'm doing some kind of uh, footage and capturing. So it just is what it is. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you have enjoyed it, then of course, subscribe to the channel and leave a likey on the video. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Thank you.